Episode 5, The Index. The air begins to reek. The quads must be close. Tesh is aware that there's no escaping the brain fog, but what he can do is convince himself he's thirsty. The meeting with DQ doesn't require much mental energy. A simple control drop. Maybe another wow will help, he thinks, simultaneously knowing it won't. A creature of habit or chemical dependency. He can't decide which he is, but he is certain that this quality is weakness. A lack of control. At a distance, the Index eye-tracking software spots the Choose It cabinet on the wall before he does. The Index window maximizes, presenting a slight dip in company value. A WOW energy drink will be available in any kiosk at the Quads. Their XP on the Index has been experiencing high growth this quarter, but he needs something with more kick. He decides to up the ante. The detour is worth it. Choose It canisters contain a synthetic chemical cocktail McCoby currently holds the patent on. The ingredients remain a mystery, but are proven to produce a massive spike in adrenaline and cortisol. He's confident the desired effect will be achieved at the cost of his future self, but there is a catch to obtaining the beverage. He knows the drill. He has been familiar with the brand since childhood. Choose it! A vending machine for spending machines! A set of four-sided dice drop with one letter engraved on each side. The first, Q-I-X-I. The second, Q T. X, T. The goal is to roll a variation of the letters I, T. Tesh rolls X, Q. If he repeats this roll, he receives a free randomized selection. He rolls again, X, X. This negates any previous roll. The interactive Choose It vendor shouts as the bottom of the tray opens to collect the dice. He swipes his wrist again. The dice fall. He rolls the letter T and the Q. If the consumer rolls any of the desired letters, I or T, with the letter Q, an option for randomized selection can be unlocked for an additional 5 QP. He's determined not to get a good night's sleep if it guarantees sharp eyes on the job. He accepts the offer by saying, Juice. And the dice fall to the sound of a new mechanical screech. The apparatus is inside, jostled. The 20 ounce canister shoots up a current of air, closing the tray's hatch immediately behind it. Elixir green. He was hoping for blue. It's a short walk to the platform lift. The quads of each stack is where waste and scrap metal was first processed before shipping to stack three for treatment. Every tight alley, walkway, and shuttle line in the middle rings begin and end at the diametrical border of these mega factories. You get used to the smell. He steps on the platform and pushes on level two. His palate is beginning to adapt to the green liquid. He rises diagonally to a labyrinth of makeshift communities built over top the non-stop drumming of industry. The do-it-yourself look of clunky grids and metal-graded pathways has some charm to it. That can't be denied. But the crooked shacks and the dyed bubbles of plastic tubing give a sense of structural unease. He ascends over the K-Corp shuttle line to the center ringlets. He would have taken the shuttle here, but they're heavily monitored. And he has a tab with an active control link to a courier of the lift service. This is the equivalent of stolen property. You can steal from most people without raising an eyebrow on Stack 7, but when you're dealing with Cade and its subsidiaries, you don't want to take any unnecessary chances. He arrives at DQ's shop minutes later. Alert. Just another door on the walkway. He enters to see a glitching silhouette of dark gray matter in the shape of a human being behind the counter. The blur stands accompanied by a static that muffles its speech. Tash can barely make out his contact sitting behind the out-of-focus image. D. Cure is polishing off one of his new pieces of work. D, what you do to this fool? Don't talk to him. He's a pedophile. Tesh knows the absent void of a person is most likely D. Cure's apprentice, Orc. He's accustomed to the armsmith's sense of humor. The gray blob mutters something incapable of comprehending, yet unmistakably profanity. That's what I think of when I see a ghost. A kid to touch him. A ghost, the way he means it, is a member of the band. This is a person who is permanently or temporarily banned from the flow feed. Usually Cade Corp or Ethereal Management issue bans, but they are most often used for crime and punishment. Gang members fear the ban simply due to the fact it may reflect poorly for their XP on the index. More hardened criminals are most commonly sent to the lock. Bans are also frequently used by streakers for blackmail, fraud, and identity theft. Decure is an ex-member of the Red Streak. Tesh's index does not pick up his affiliation. But the two men share some history under Bison. Despite their lack of physical presence, the Red Streak or the RS are one of the most feared organizations in Arcadia. 
Hackers and streakers alike form this dark flow network allied under secrecy. If anyone was ever a part of such an organization, one could assume they would have access to band codes. Tash knows the codes and the ways around them. That doesn't mean Orc will receive any of the streakers' services pro bono. So how are we looking? The weapons and security software dealer still hasn't turned around to make eye contact. We looking good, D. Tash steps into the cramped lobby a little further, while who is hopefully his apprentice Orc retreats to the back room. He rests the top half of his body weight on the reception table to speak through the cutouts of glass. Just give me one more second. D. Kier is laser chiseling his final touches onto the latest workbench project. His old tag name, his brand. He blows off the scrap dust and turns around and snaps. Let's give her a test and call the big man then. You know he likes to be updated. He pulls out the mini data tab from inside his coat pocket. It's pretty plug and play. This is a link to the stub. Should get your hands on with mild latency. It should. It will. Tash hands him the tab over the meter high glass. Y you don't have a, a controller? What? Are you telling me you don't have a controller of any kind in this scrap heap? The shopkeep tucks his chin under his massive beard with a smile and widens his eyes at him. He is not amused. You're a funny guy. Thanks. D. Kier plugs the tab into the portal above the counter. A duo sync controller is yanked from the shopkeeper's bottom drawer. He tests the courier's movements and automation control. Seemingly satisfied, he signals Bison. Talk. She's on her way over and I'm feeling ready, excited, truly. I mean, this thing will give an inch of drop for six miles. Good. You two gentlemen come and see me when it's done, all right? Tell Tesh, hop on the street. I'm here. Stay on standby for me. You don't have to stand by him. Nice hmm. one. You got it. The flow stream ends at once, and Tess begins to shuffle to the exit. You take care, D, and, and D. He looks at the back room housing the ghostly apprentice. Straighten the kid out, won't you? D. Kier hunches closer to the glass to whisper. One more hour. He leaves with the hopes of finding an adequate destination point. Thank you again for listening. Please follow us on Instagram to see our amazing artwork. If you're on Spotify or YouTube, please like, follow, and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated.